Hello friends and family of YouTube. Today I'm going to be talking about pulling a camper for the first time. Or if you're a newbie and you've only pulled a few times, you're going to still get some valuable information from today. If you've been pulling a trailer for a long time, I'm going to have some humor in here for you today as well. So this video is going to work great for anybody. So y'all stick around. So today I will be talking about things that nobody else ever talks about, like wind, how wind can affect you as you're trying to pull a camper or trailer down the road. Also going down a hill, the dangers that are involved with going down a hill and what you need to know and uh, how you need to plan for that. Quite a few other things. So anyway, let's get started. I would like to preface this video by telling you this video is about the dangers involved with pulling a camper or trailer. This video will not talk about the fact that you need to make sure your antenna is down before traveling down the road or that you need to check your air pressure. I'm only going to talk about the extreme dangers in this video. So this is the Cliff Notes version. And I'm gonna be using some props today from the kitchen. So these will make a lot more sense as we go along, but uh, hopefully this will be a good way to illustrate to you some of the dangers involved and some of the better ways that you can be prepared as you're going down the road. All right, for this first illustration, we are gonna talk about wind. And there is mother wind right there, mother nature, however you wanna think about it. And that box of cereal right there is going to represent a camper going down the road. So watch what happens when the wind hits on that camper. Okay, that was a little dramatic, but I'm trying to make a point. If you've never pulled a camper before and all you've rode in is uh, cars and trucks, vans, you've probably never really felt the impact of a wind, but you notice how much taller a camper or a cardboard box is, uh, it's gonna catch more wind. So that wind is gonna make that camper, that trailer, do some funny things. And you're pulling it down the road. Anything that impacts that camper will impact the car that is pulling it or truck or suv so let me show you a little little more uh illustration of what i'm talking about here so let's pretend these lines on the picnic table represent the lines on the highway and as we showed you the uh, wind is blowing from this direction and it is wanting to push you off of the road and into the grass there so as the wind is pushing you from that angle, you're gonna have your steering wheel turned so that you are being more pulled back this direction, back into this other lane of traffic as opposed to going off the road. Now, this is very important because I had a friend that was very well experienced, and I'm gonna tell you, he lost everything he owned because of what I'm about to tell you and show you. So my friend, he was pulling a camper down an interstate and he's in the cardboard box, the uh, box of cereal. And all of a sudden here comes an 18 wheeler. The 18 wheeler is bigger than him and the 18 wheeler is in the uh, Dr. Thunder box. Now, if you know anything about wind, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm gonna talk on a very elementary level here, wind, can be blocked by anything, okay? Now, if you recall, when that wind was pushing that box off of the table, remember what you were having to do, you had to turn the steering wheel so that you were going into the table area and not running off into the grass because the wind was trying to push you off the table. And here we are from a back view. Keep in mind, the wind is wanting to blow the rear end and the whole camper that you're driving, the wind is wanting to push you this way. Here comes this 18 wheeler and as he starts to pass you, look what happens. 
he is blocking the wind you see that so as soon as he comes up behind you and he starts to block that wind from your back corner well i got a lot of shadows going on here it's early in the morning so uh as he comes up and he blocks that wind off the back corner of your camper as soon as he does that your your trailer is going to start doing some of this so if you're not prepared for it what can happen is you overreact and you end up in a bad wreck and that is exactly what happened to a friend of mine as this uh, 18 wheeler come past him he was overloaded he was way too heavy my friend was his camper got out of shape and when it did he came over in front of the 18 wheeler he ended up flipping his house his uh camper about three or four times it got completely destroyed he flipped his his vehicle that was pulling it so the reason i tell you number one is if the wind's blowing too hard you probably need to stay off the road secondly if you see an 18 wheeler come up behind you slow down a little bit you don't need to be driving too fast anyway but what you want to do is slow down anticipate the fact that that wind is going to happen and you will feel it even on days that there is no wind as that 18 wheeler comes beside you and usually here's what 18 wheelers do to campers when you're driving down the road mind your own business and you're doing 60 here's what an 18 wheeler will do he will come by you that fast you could see what happened there just it going by there the wind off of it made your camper wiggle all right now what i want to talk about is going up and down hills all right so going up a hill is great everything's fine you're not going to feel any big problems other than the fact that your transmission is begging for mercy going up a hill so now you're wondering what it's like to go downhill well let's imagine that your truck car suv whatever you're pulling with let's imagine it's that little container of butter right there and let's imagine your camper, trailer, RV, whatever you want to call it, it's the Dr. Thunderbox. And we're going to go downhill. Now, what I want you to think about is look at that proportion right there. Think about what's going to happen when you go downhill. That camper is much bigger than your vehicle. And as it's going down that hill, it is literally pushing your vehicle along it's gonna push you down that hill so you have to be prepared for it now the reason i want to show you this illustration of this much bigger container of a uh, trailer versus the the pull vehicle is because many times i see this mistake being made of too small of a vehicle with too large of a trailer and right now you would not want to be in that little vehicle with that huge trailer going down a hill because there you went with your family your your generators oh my god here comes the trailer and oh you're lucky it didn't land on you all right now look at this situation this is much more reasonable now you're in the ziploc box there and this is your pull vehicle the saltine cracker box is your trailer. You can see that it is not much bigger than your vehicle that you're pulling with. Much safer situation. Now, so how do you go downhill safely? I'm, I'm going to tell you. As soon as you're up on the top of the hill and you know you're about to start going downhill, now, I'm not talking about just a small hill. I'm talking about a big one. What you want to do is start slowing down using your brakes while you're still on top of the hill. Once you get it slowed down, now take your gear shifter and go down, uh, down a gear. Let's say that you were in drive and your uh, gear shifter has a low two and a low one. You would go down to the low two or the second speed and what that will do is that will slow down your pull vehicle and of course your trailer is attached to it 
the reason you want to do this is you never want to just use your brakes of your vehicles this should have uh, electric brakes on it on your trailer on your camper inside of your pull vehicle you should have what's called a brake controller and that will operate these brakes but you do not want to just use your brakes trying to slow your vehicle down once you get this slowed down to about 40 45 miles per hour now you can drop it down into the second gear and when you get it down into the second gear it will slow you down and, and it will help keep you slowed down and as you're going down the hill you will take your foot on the brake pedal and you will just push on and off you don't want to stay on a long amount of time and you don't want to stay off of the pedal for a real long time either but you want to give enough time that your brakes can cool off in between pushing your brake pedal down you never want to ride down a mountain or a big hill with your foot just holding down on the brakes because i can guarantee you that by the time you get to the bottom of that hill same situation as earlier there you go right off of the mountain now i want to talk to you about the biggest mistake i made and fortunately it did not cost me as I look back and I think about how stupid it was that I got away with this, I'm, I'm really amazed, but it happens. So I want to talk about it, make sure that you don't make the same mistake that I was making. And uh, man, I am so lucky that nobody got hurt. All right, so what I want to point out to you now is the difference between your pulling vehicle Let's imagine this is like a Jeep, and this right here is a pickup truck. If you notice, this Jeep is very short wheelbase, as in the wheels are very short from each other. This being a truck, your wheels are very far apart, especially if you have a van. That is, to me, the best pulling situation is to use a van. So let's imagine that here you are in this uh, little Jeep, and your wheels are close together. The thing that having your wheels close together, your vehicle can easily do this. Now I'm being very dramatic, but if you think about it, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of resistance that keeps this from getting out of control, even if you're not pulling a trailer. But you definitely, in my opinion, you never want to pull a trailer with a Jeep okay so anyway that's that's going from one drastic point to another anyway your uh, pickup truck with your wheels very far apart your resistance is much different the further your wheels are apart on your pull vehicle the more stable it is going to give you a pull as you're going down the road now i want to show you the mistake that i made this is what I started off with years ago. I had no previous knowledge. I cannot believe I got away with it. I had a small Ford Explorer uh, SUV. It's a two-door, very small. I had a 24-foot camper. When I went and bought it, I didn't even have brake controller hooked up to it. I didn't know there was such a thing as a brake controller when I went and bought the camper. I knew absolutely nothing. I really got away with one on this. This is the most dangerous situation you can put yourself into and others around you. I'm embarrassed that I did it, but we all make mistakes and I wanna make sure you don't make the same mistake. Having a very small vehicle with a very large trailer is the most dangerous thing you can do. All right, what I want to talk about on this particular uh, portion of the video is how much weight you are carrying. You want to carry the least amount as possible is what you want to do. This is your pull vehicle. This is your camper. Now, if you take and you put all your heavy belongings into the back of the camper, this is your uh, generators, your, uh, your luggage, your food, your wife's makeup let's put a little more makeup in there 
All right, so there you are. You got everything loaded down on the back of the camper. If you do that, as you're going down the road, the back end of this camper is gonna wiggle like crazy. And if you go downhill with that camper loaded down heavy in the back end, you will never be able to regain control and that will be disastrous. So what you wanna do is since we are camping, let's tell her, don't, don't bring as much makeup this weekend, all right? I, I love you no matter what. So let's, uh, let's put some of the weight up towards the front, not, not a whole lot. You don't wanna weight it down a whole lot, but you wanna slide that weight over. Right here is where your axle is of your camper. So let's do that. Let's keep it more loaded like that. And as a matter of fact, let's put some of this luggage into the pull vehicle, just like that. Now we're more balanced out. Again, you don't want to put a whole lot of heavy stuff in here, but keep in mind, you've got water tanks in here and the uh, camper. That's a lot of weight, just how much fresh water or your sewage water that you got on your camper. You could have 300, 400 pounds just in that alone. So loading up with a lot of uh, unnecessary goods is not a wise decision, but this would give you a much better ride going down the road. But again, you've got to stay within weight limits. The less amount of weight, the better. Hopefully the video I made for you today didn't scare you out of trying to get out and go camping and have some fun. It was not my intention to try to scare you out of having some fun and going camping, but what I did want to do is I, I wanted to uh, teach you some of the things that I didn't know when I started off and uh, things that a lot of people do not talk about. So uh, I know your dealer, uh, they don't talk about it, your sales rep, uh, and there's not many videos out there on the topics that I hit today. So um, I tell you what, Look down to the comments below. Uh, if you've noticed anything about the RV community, we are very strong. We stick together. We try to help each other out. Read the comments down below, and I'm sure you will read uh, some great tips and tricks down there as well. I will be having more videos on this subject in the future. And uh, right now I've got over 250 videos on this channel. So uh, hopefully there's something on here also that can help you out get started. So folks, I appreciate y'all spending some time with me today. If you hadn't hit the like, subscribe, and rang that bell, y'all know what to do from this point. Hope to see y'all again real soon. Thanks for watching. See y'all. Bye-bye.